Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I could ask everyone to take their seats now and、uh, if I could have your attention. Thank you. Welcome to the 38th Annual Heritage Toronto Awards presentation and the 16th William Kilbourne Memorial Lecture. My name is Mary Ito and I host a show on the weekends on CBC Radio 1 called Fresh Air. Thank you. I like that drum. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could have that on my show every weekend. It's my pleasure to return as host for this evening. I believe this is my fifth year. And it, it's wonderful. Yeah, it feels like coming home. I know more and more people every year. And、uh, this year, we have a fantastic crowd. I believe there are almost 600 people in Kerner Hall tonight. So thank you all for coming out this evening. Just before we begin, I would like to invite Gary Sue, who is an elder of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. He will offer a prayer to open the evening. Mr. Sue. Mujo, Ogashige Higanin and Dijnakas, Megazine Dodem, Mississauga and Dow, New Credit Dunje. In all of our The way that we start off things as Aboriginal people is that we have a saying, it's called the words that come before. Because before we start anything, we like to start it with a prayer. And the reason being is that every day we feed our body with the food that h a v e been placed here on our Mother the Earth. And every day we feed our minds with the things we hear. And the things that we see. But when we pray, we feed our spirit. And so, in order to feed your spirit, I'm going to sing this song. And it's a prayer to the Creator. And what it says is I give thanks. And I need that, what we call, and that means that you have that good life. And When you have that good life, it, it means that、uh, you have to keep it in balance. And you don't,、uh, don't be so good that you start calling your brother or your sister down. And don't be so bad that your grandmother wouldn't smile at you. <laughs> so when you keep that in balance, then you can go out into the world with a good smile on your face. So I'm going to、uh, sing this song. And it's a prayer to our Creator and ask Him that everybody, that this event goes in a good way and that the Creator smiles down upon us. We h o p Oh, wait. 
have a, a good evening. Miigwech. Thank you very much, Mr. Sue. That was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I thought a lot about the word heritage this week and what it means. And I, I think for many people, when they hear the word heritage in terms of Toronto, they're tempted to think of old buildings. And that belief often gets tied to the idea that heritage is unchanging, that it's locked in time. And I think many young people may not be interested in heritage because of this kind of narrow definition. They feel it's about a dusty old past that really has little to do with them. But that is so not true. We do honor and we do preserve old buildings. And aside from the aesthetic pleasure that they give us, what they are is a reflection of who we were and who we are today. They tell us about the culture, the politics, the social climate, and the tastes of a certain time what was acceptable, what was not, how we've changed, and how we haven't. They tell us the good and bad about ourselves. Buildings are signposts of where we've been and where we might go in the future. And new buildings, of course, are part of our evolving heritage, representing the new stories of people who create them. And as you're going to see and hear tonight, heritage also embraces so much more, especially when it comes to this city. Toronto, I don't need to tell you, is evolving in a myriad of ways, ways that those with vision are trying to imagine. And as a result, we have a dynamic, exciting, and evolving heritage. We've been a city of immigrants, and we are becoming more so every year. Over half of our current population was born outside of Canada, and you will find over 140 different languages and dialects spoken here. And if you look even closer, our heritage embraces the heritage of every individual who has his or her own unique story and who makes a contribution, big or small, just by being here. Of course, what I'm really talking about is the intangible heritage that all of us bring. Our past, our experiences, our stories from all over the world, which we keep alive and which become a part of this rich, colorful mosaic the heritage of Toronto. And we pass this on to our children and the generations to come. I really hope that we can make young people and others, perhaps newcomers to this city, realize that our past, our present, and our future are seamless, that we are all part of it and we're all bound together by it, and that we can each have a role in honoring, building upon, and celebrating the heritage of our home, this city, Toronto. Uh, after some welcoming remarks, we are going to be featuring the William Kilbourne Memorial Lecture. This is something that I look forward to every year. And this will be delivered by this year's esteemed speaker, Chief Brian LaForme of Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. And then the lecture is going to be followed by the presentation of the 2012 Heritage Toronto Awards. Uh, just before we begin our presentation, please help me welcome the Executive Director of Heritage Toronto, a very dynamic woman, Karen Carter. Now, what do you do when one says a very dynamic woman? <laughs> I love Mary Ito, um, and I'm sure you love her back. Um, normally I'm here to introduce our staff, the tiny but mighty team that makes this event as well as other things such as our plaques and markers program and our Heritage Toronto Walks possible uh, each year. I have the pleasure of working with some of the smartest, most interesting people in the heritage and cultural sector in this city. But before I do that, I wanna talk a bit about all of you how nice it is to see all of you in this space. We've been doing a lot of work with our volunteer board within our strategic planning to ensure that this great message we have at Heritage Toronto about our city's shared heritage is not just preaching to the converted, not just messages that we're sharing with those that work in the sector, but a message that gets out to the broader community. So as I look out and I see people up in the bleachers there that can't actually see what their faces look like and to the side inside, I think, 
we're doing okay. It's working. All this hard work, board members, that we've been doing with our strat plan is uh, bearing fruit. So I thank you very much for attending this evening, and we hope to see you next year and the year after that, just kind of marking your calendar, fall, right after Thanksgiving, Heritage Toronto. Okay? Agreed? Now you get to give yourselves a hand. Thank you very much. Uh, for attending. I also want to highlight the fact that we've been doing some work with the diverse cultural community organizations, many of whom are keepers of their community's heritage stories, so we're happy to see uh, folks from those cultural communities represented here this evening, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. So here comes the tiny but mighty team. Gary Miedema is our Chief Historian and Associate Director. Caitlin Wainwright is our current Plaques and Markers Coordinator. She's new to the team. She moved to Ottawa, from here, from Ottawa to Toronto to be with us, so we are happy that Caitlin saw fit to join our team. Karen Sisnicki is a person that helps keeps us all in order, our office administrator. Rachel Ostep is one of the smartest, most brilliant young people one could ever meet. She stepped in this year uh, because Nancy Luno, our usual program coordinator, is away sick, and uh, Rachel is coming from George Brown with a special events degree, and you gotta love George Brown. They're crunching out brilliance. She's fantastic. So please, if I would say raise a glass, raise your hands. So give my team some love. I now would like to introduce you to our esteemed, the esteemed continues, <laughs> chair of our board, another dynamic lady, Lady Alex Pike. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And thank you, Mr. Sue, for opening up our evening. I do Heritage Toronto for my spirit. It, uh, it brings goodness into my heart and my mind. And uh, I hope we can bring a bit of that to you tonight when you see how these nominees have worked, how hard they've worked, how our volunteers have worked, how hard they've worked to choose the award winners. And also, when you hear Chief Brian LaForme, um, I'm really, really excited to have Chief Laform here. Our theme tonight is a layered city. And if you think of starting with the geology and then add the First Peoples and then add the immigration and you look around this city today, we are a layered city. And uh, Chief Laform is, is going to take us both back uh, to the early layers and also into more recent times and uh, and hopefully add to your knowledge of the city. So thank you very much for coming. I also want to thank our sponsors who um, not only contribute to everything we're doing here tonight, but allow us to get the word out about this city's stories. Our presenting sponsor is Woodcliff Landmark Properties, and Eve is here with us tonight. We're thrilled to have her here. Our program, a little applause for them. <laughs> Our program sponsor is Brook Restoration, who uh, has just recently joined us, and uh, we can feel the wind in our sails with them. So, uh, Jeff, thank you to you and your team very much for joining us as well. And the Carpenters Union number, uh, sorry, local 598, uh, is a tremendous sponsor uh, of ours and do tremendous, tremendous work on heritage buildings. So we're not only glad that they're supporting us, but we're glad they're supporting heritage in our city. So thank you again to our sponsors and enjoy this evening. Thanks very much, Alex. Uh, I have the pleasure tonight of introducing this evening's presenting sponsor, a leader in celebrating and preserving our city's past from Woodcliffe Landmark Properties, Eve Lewis. Hi, good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, Woodcliffe's honor to continue as presenting sponsor 
of the Heritage Toronto Awards this year. Since 19, uh, sorry, since 2006, um, Woodcliffe has sponsored these awards um, as my late husband, Paul Oberman, truly believed that these awards recognized and honor, honored the individuals, companies, and organizations that restore, promote the historical fabric of this great city, Toronto. Paul's first loving restoration of historic buildings started in 1987, 25 years ago with the assembly of King's James Place, which is just across from the St. James Cathedral Park. And it also included the Army and Navy sur surplus building and 133 King Street East. It was completed in 1991, and it was the last commercial buildings to be restored during that horrific recession that we had until about 15 years later when they started the high-rise commercial buildings in the core. The buildings were designed by Bruce Kuhlberg and Shirley Bloomberg of KPMB Architects. And in fact, I think it was their first building, buildings that they did when they started their new company. And it was also the start of Paul's passion. Passion for and a vision of beautifully restored, uh, repurposed repurp historical buildings that would often have modern facades and components added to them for the modern day use of in integrating into the neighborhoods and the historical um, areas that these buildings were really part of the historical culture of those areas. Since then, you know, he added a, a beautiful set of buildings, the North Toronto Station, everybody knows as the LCBO at Summer Hill, um, the shops at Summer Hill, which someday may not be known as the Five Thieves, particularly since there's now seven of them. Um, <laughs> And then, of course, 105 and 109 King Street East, which is where the hot new restaurant origin is, if you know it, King and in Church. And we are just now finishing what Paul started, which is the completion of three historic buildings on um, Market Street and a beautiful building that was designed by Michael Taylor. Those buildings are nearly complete, and we will be starting the sidewalk expansion, which is the first privately initiated sidewalk expansion that will have um, patios for the entire block of that street for restaurants. And I think that, you know, <laughs> thank you. I think that everybody here has a passion for this city. And if you look at the historical component of it and how really you can do so well with it financially if everybody would just wake up and realize that if you restore something really beautifully you can get a tremendous premium for it whether whether it's retail and commercial like Paul did with Woodcliffe or I see um, Gary Switzer and Nerez Lalani who um, are modern doing the Massey Tower, which a condominium, 60-story beautiful condominium building, but it incorporates the restoration of a bank building that has been laid vacant for 25 years. And, you know, my company, Market Vision, is selling that project, and I can tell you, we get a significant premium because there's a historical part of it that has been integrated into the fabric of that building, and it, it provides something that makes people feel that it's special, that it's unique, that it's part of a community that is that has lived for a long time. So I feel it's our responsibility and everyone here and everybody in the city to to make a commitment to, you know, historical preservation, but making making it a better place to live. Thank you. Thanks very much, Eve, and I'm really happy that uh, you gave us an update on everything you're doing. Those sound like exciting projects, and it, it is great to hear that Paul's spirit also lives on, so thank you for that. Uh, right now, let me introduce this evening's generous program sponsor from Brook Restoration, Alex McMullen. Thank you, Mary. Uh, good evening, everyone. Brook Restoration is honored to be program sponsor for the Heritage Toronto Awards and the William Kilbarn Lecture this year. Like Heritage Toronto, Brook has a hardworking team that is doing great work in our field. And over the past 12 years, under the leadership of our president and founder, Jeff Christ, Brook has developed and maintained a reputation for creative and innovative solutions in the world of structure restoration. 
Heritage Restoration plays a very exciting role in our portfolio as it offers a great reward to see a project come to fruition. Brooke will continue our support of Heritage Toronto as we recognize the true value of these properties. They represent not only our culture and history, but excellence in building practice, which is sometimes overlooked these days. Congratulations to all the nominees this evening for the wonderful work you're all doing in the heritage sector. Your efforts help to make Toronto a better city to live in. And congratulations especially to Heritage Toronto for their leadership in the heritage community and for all the staff and volunteers and all their work that they put into making this evening a great success. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the program. Thanks very much, Alex.